All right, everyone. Um, our next speaker is uh, Nick Vinhoff, and uh, he will be talking about open personalization uh, with uh, Apache Wumi, Drupal, and uh, Maorik in the GDPR uh, era. So without further ado, uh, let's welcome uh, Nick. Hi, good afternoon, good morning, whichever time zone everybody is in, um, welcome at this session about open personalization with Apache Anomi and indeed uh, with Motic um, and Drupal as our CMS component in this uh, GDPR era. And so in this privacy first, uh, data first um, yeah, time frame, um, where this is quite important to actually own your data or at least have full control about the data that uh, you interact uh, with your customers with. So. Uh, let's see what this is all about. Um, in, in the current days, in terms of projects, uh, we have a global market, uh, depending on where you do business. Uh, it could be you do business in Belgium uh, or in all of Europe or at least globally. Um, that doesn't mean that you only have one audience. Um, when you're thinking about websites, uh, you often think about personas and these personas could be very different and they have very different uh, ways of interacting with you as a business. Now, um, this is quite important to, to understand. So we'll dive into this topic a little bit. Also, um, how we will measure success. So how do you, uh, if you combine all these technologies uh, like marketing automation with personalization on the website, um, including um, conversion uh, increase or conversion optimizations in, in the end, like which tools do you use to measure success? How do you figure out if uh, all these interconnected links actually make sense uh, from a business point of view um, or in, in real data? We'll also go into a demo. Um, that's, I think, the, the most exciting parts of this presentation. So we'll take some time to guide you through those tools, uh, including the interactions that we have with Motic. And then um, I'll give you a bit of an overview of uh, what's happening from going from a website to a website with marketing automation, which um, luckily most of you, uh, if not all of you, understand that marketing automation is important in this era. Uh, we're also adding a personalization component to increase the conversion of um, getting people in our marketing automation machine. Now, before we get to this uh, agenda, I'd like to introduce myself a little bit. My name is Nick and I'm a CTO at DropSolid. Um, and I've been in the uh, Drupal open source uh, community for more than 13 years. What does that mean? Um, it means that I started as a website builder uh, trying to uh, really do the, the technical um, bits and bytes from specific sites, including very complicated uh, search engines, for example, and, and really managing that content uh, from all kinds of uh, layers. I wasn't very into the marketing automation part until I joined DropSolid and I saw like how a business um, tries to build an engine or lead generation and then lead conversion from visitors on the website into um, visitors that actually become sales leads or depending on what your KPIs are. It could also be that your KPIs are longer time on site, informing people, depending if maybe you're a government um, that, or a government project that tries to inform people um, in contrast to maybe a private company that tries to bring in leads for specific products or services. Um, so that's what I learned in, in those years uh, from a developer into a product developer into the CTO, CTO role that I'm at, um, trying to understand all these different components. Um, without further ado, I'll continue. And um, normally you will hear some sounds um, and hopefully Roland, you can help me if you don't hear the sound and the audio is shared. And uh, there's a little video that can help you understand the concept of personalization, including um, what it means for marketing automation. So the drop solid experience this. cloud enables you to optimize the customer experience, resulting in higher conversion rates and better customer satisfaction. Let's have a look at how this works. We have our anonymous surfer searching in Google for flower piece. There we go. Well, look at that. The first result she gets is Florista, a website with a fully integrated drop solid experience cloud. Our still anonymous visitor is browsing the homepage. 
She's scanning through the themes of the new collection, looking at the featured products, and taking a closer look at the upcoming workshops. While she's doing all that, the personalization AI is using his magic. By using machine learning, the AI identifies different segments of visitors and tries to fit our visitor in one of those segments. On the Florista website, there are three specific segments. There's the B2B prospect, the online shopper, and the explorer. He or she is now looking at the latest inspiration from the blog and is showing an interest in the first article. There's a great step-by-step -step guide on how to make your own flower arrangements. And there we go! The AI has identified this visitor as an explorer. That's how long it takes. Our explorer gets to the end of the blog article and fills in a form to receive a free download. Great! Now our explorer has a name and we even have her mailing address and consent to start sending newsletters. Our anonymous visitor isn't that anonymous anymore. Let's have a look at what information we've received. So, her name is Sophia, Sophia Mertens. Her email address is sophia.mertens at gmail.com. And we know that she's an explorer. We even know what she looks like from the picture connected to her Google account. The log shows when she first visited the website and what actions she has performed. And now, the fun part. Let's put that information to good use. The next time Sophia visits the Florista website, the homepage looks slightly different. We have an explorer, not an online shopper or business, so the content has changed to reflect that. The subscription form for the workshops has been put at the top of the page, just the way Sophia likes it. As an explorer, she's eager to learn and get creative herself. She's not looking to buy a flower piece, not at this point at least. How great would it be if Sophia also received newsletters tailored to her needs? Oh, there's a new email. Let's see what's in it. Wow, workshops, tutorials, DIY packages, exactly what she was looking for. Now that's a great user experience. Okay, so maybe from what you uh, already gathered in the video, the, the forms to collect the information obviously come from Matic. Eh? So depending on the persona that we identify on the website, we will maybe put different forms on different places uh, on the website to increase that conversion, to increase the likeliness that someone actually fills in that form in order to get into the marketing automation machine. Now, um, what I mentioned about the global market uh, doesn't mean one audience. That's exactly what that video was talking about. Um, it doesn't mean that you post the, the one form on your website and have a great marketing automation machine that people will actually fill in that form uh, or that the content around that uh, makes sense for everybody uh, on, online. So this is more or less like a flow from uh, a customer or from an end user on, on a specific site uh, from version, uh, which is the, the form that most likely is embedded on the website by Motic or could be the landing page. I'll show you how uh, we do that with Drupal in a bit. Um, and then um, there's the email that actually uh, tells her, OK, great to have you here. Um, and ultimately, we follow up in that same journey. Could be over the period of multiple weeks or months. And like, how are you doing? Uh, there's more flowers here, etc. cetera. Um, but this isn't the same for everybody. You see on the left and in the top that the, the regular website has uh, maybe like buy buttons for flowers. But um, on, on the right, uh, you can see there's a little fo uh, form to say, OK, subscribe to our workshops. So this kind of personalization is what we're talking about in this session. Uh, Sophia's journey is different from uh, people that um, have only visited the website for the first time. Uh, but you can see as soon as you click around, uh, we'll try to figure out, okay, do you fit into a certain persona? There's always more personas than just one. In this case, there's Sophia, the explorer, but also maybe Mark, the online shopper, um, or Lilian uh, could be a business to business provider providing flowers in this demo case. And what I'm saying isn't just something that I said. It's something that you can find in from different quotes. And this is, for example, a quote from the Global Web Index blog saying uh, that data-driven campaigns are required and uh, you should use deep data to build these personas. And with that deep data, you're actually adding that emotional and behavioral component instead of asking in a form, what are you looking for? Um, which could be too black and white in terms of asking. 
um, trying to uh, get nuances uh, is similar to someone that actually gets into a store um, and you're trying to see from afar, like, okay, what is this person trying to achieve in my physical store? It's not that different online. So how do you measure success with personalization? You could do something like this. Uh, so this is a, a Google Sheet where you try to figure out, okay, what's the boundary? What's the average time on the page or an average time on the site? Uh, what's the, the loading uh, speed? You try to measure all of that and you give it a total score. And okay, great, we have a great digital experience. But this doesn't take the different personas in mind. Maybe another way um, is to do this with Hotjar. Hotjar is a system uh, that tracks your pages for where on the page the most clicks are actually happening. Um, and then you can uh, go back to Hotjar and see, okay, this is a very, very hot topic apparently, but also in this case, you're not taking the different personas or segments um, into account. And actually you want to see heat maps for those different personas, so for Sophia, for Mark, um, etc. So another way of doing this, Google Analytics, you could have something like this where you push Google Analytics to Google Data Studio, create an amazing dashboard, but still you're stuck with that one global audience. Um, so that's also not exactly what we want. What if you could actually get those segments and push them into Google Analytics or in Matic or in Hotjar um, and into any other system that you would like. Uh, for example, in this case, what you're seeing right now is a screenshot of Google Analytics that divided the traffic based on the uh, personas that uh, Apache Unomi detects um, that you're actually in. So in this case, for example, we can see that the, the second uh, segment is not performing as well as the other two. You can see it only has a goal conversion rate of 1.3, even though that the top segment has a lot more um, yeah, sessions, but also the, the last segment has a lot less sessions. So there's something, something different about that middle session, like that middle segment. And that means that you could start by personalizing towards that segment in order to increase that conversion rate to be on par with the other two or that you try to optimize the, the best performing one to do even better. Uh, so that depends on your business goals. But the biggest question is obviously, how do you do this? Um, here's another example of a customer of uh, Drop Solid where we see, okay, if people actually come in with um, questions about content, um, and this uh, specific customer sells beds and uh, equipment for better sleeping, um, is that they came in with blog articles about uh, yeah, sw sweating at night and those kind of things, and then ultimately ended up in converting into buying uh, maybe specific pillows against that kind of uh, bad nights or, or um, those things. You can see, uh, even though the conversion rate is not very high, this is a very small snapshot, um, we do see that if we can segment them somehow in a group and figure out what is the intention, that you can also start to measure the conversion rate for the intention audience. Um, and I've used a lot of different words together. I used intention audience, I used segments, I used persona. And it's on purpose. Eh? So I, I don't have the right answer on how you should name something like this because you have persona, but that usually is just a single person. Um, but it could be that a single person has different intentions. Um, we could have segments, but also in Mautic, you have segments. And that could be categories of people, even though people could be in multiple categories based on maybe properties that they have in their profile. Actually, it's the intention that matters. And the intention could be a very short attention span. Um, if you have any questions about that, I'm happy to answer them uh, maybe after this session. So let's get into the demo. What we'll see is um, we'll try to capture an online behavior into unified customer profiles in Apache Unomi, uh, discover the intention of, oh, we're clicking around, um, what kind of intention do you have on my website? We'll personalize that website experience for that visitor, but also uh, we'll go one step further, see how we can use this in action in our marketing automation suite. Okay, so let me, um, share the other screen for you. Great. 
So, what will I show? Um, and you should be able to see my screen again. Um, I'll show the Apache Unomi software, which is actually capturing our information from the website, similar as Hotjar does that. Um, just to give you some info, this is the DropSolid website. Feel free to test this out yourself. I'm clicking around on maybe here, digital experiences in your DNA or um, businesses like yours, uh, scalable digital experience, great. Um, I clicked around even though I didn't really refresh my page. All right, so how does this relate or, or translate uh, into to practice? Let's see um, if I can bring up my own profile here. Let's do this from today. And what we see is that you can see my click pot um, from what I just did here and I'll increase it a bit. So that should be better. Um, so you can see, okay, huh? this is exactly what I clicked on. Maybe multiple times I could have clicked on it or selected it. So this is not that different from, from Hotjar. Um, the only difference is this is your data. This actually goes into a bucket of this Apache Unomi software, which uses Elasticsearch behind the scenes um, to uh, store this in, in a way that you decide on how to uh, handle that data. It's nobody else's data. Um, and Obviously, you need to ask for consent before you start to process that data, uh, but that's a whole other topic. Um, maybe if we have time left, I can explain you how uh, DropSolid handles that. Now, um, once you have all that data, uh, and this is not just my data, um, there's, a, there's a whole lot more, um, we can actually use machine learning to segment all that data into different groups. Now, uh, to give you an overview on uh, these groups, let me uh, minimize it a little bit. This is the end result of what the machine learning did uh, in categorizing intention groups. So I asked the, the, the tool, um, give me four groups and um, figure out what is the difference between all the traffic and divide it in four buckets. Um, what ultimately ends up uh, or like what we get as a result is four groups that are distinctively or are distinctively different from each other in one way or another. It could be in the click pattern or in the content that they're interacting with. And we can see this as well. So on the website of DropSolid, I tested this um, also just to protect customers' data in this uh, case. So we have English traffic. Somehow the tool or the AI said this is a traffic bucket on its own or intention. Um, but here we see something interesting and I'll translate it a little bit for you. We see here, um, like ambitious and um, guidance of companies and training guidance, ambitious company, very much business words or digital business words. But on the right side, we see lots of technical words, which could be content, DXP, React, uh, Search, Build, um, yeah, Drupal, all those kind of words. So we can see these are very different content interactions and could also be very different intention. So we call the right group technical audience, we call the left group business audience. And um, this is just to explain, okay, how does that work? We create segments um, and the, the segments are one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, translations uh, for the Apache Hinomi segments. Um, the UI that you see is from the DropSolid platform. However, uh, it just consumes the APIs from Apache Hinomi. So you could do all of these things yourself um, just to, to create those segments, except for the AI algorithm, which uh, is proprietary from DropSolid. But it doesn't mean that you cannot use you know me for uh, st static uh, rule building, for example. Is it mobile? Um, is it desktop? Um, is it this language or this country? Um, that everything uh, around that is available in Apache Unomi. So ultimately, we get a couple of segments um, and uh, we can see, okay, we have intention group business, which is business decision maker and technical. We'll focus on those two, uh, just not to make it too complicated. Now, what we can see here in, in the profiles, and this is also like an overview of the data within Apache Unomi, is that we have a lot of visitors um, here uh, with these profiles that fall into segments like business decision or technical or applicant in the last couple of days. So you could somewhat compare this with the Motic capture, 
Although Mautic only captures page views, uh, not necessarily the actual interaction that happens with the site. So this is one layer uh, above that even. How does that translate into a different personalized experience? What we see here is the, the website of DropSolid, and we can actually change this into, for example, a business decision maker, and suddenly we see different content. Um, similar with technical decision maker, uh, you can see it has different content. Okay, you might wonder, how does that help me? Uh, how does that even relate to, to Mautic? Now, that's where uh, it comes in. Um, and uh, this information is actually available in your browser. Um, and I'll show you um, here. Uh, if you click somewhere, you can see there's an action going towards uh, Apache Unomi. Um, and you can see, okay, this is a full profile that actually comes back for that specific visitor. This is fully anonymous, as in for anonymous visitors, you don't have to identify as a specific user within Matic or on a form. Yeah? So everything comes back. And you can see that in this case, this profile segment name is an applicant. Now, there's a whole API that helps you. And this is a bit too technical for, for now, but I'll explain to you later. Um, if there's maybe time for Q&A about this part, where you can transfer that information from that full profile in Unomi on which segments you're belonging to into other applications. Um, and for people that are, um, yeah, uh, yeah, that know the Mautic API, or at least the JavaScript Mautic API, you can see something familiar here. Yeah? So after all of this, we're actually sending the, the segment or the intention audience into Mautic. And that's exactly what I'm showing here. This is the profile of myself, uh, also GDPR compliance. I'm not able to show you anyone else on uh, our own site. Um, and you can see I have some points and I opened an email and today uh, I also like submitted a form. Great. Um, and I'm sure if you have Motics already yourself, uh, there's a lot of context in there um, and you're a bit limited with the information you have about uh, people in terms of like what did they interact with. Right? So you can figure out, okay, these pages, but there's not a lot of logic that actually helps you trying to figure out what is the intention of that person. What we explained before with Apache Unomi is that we can send that into Mautic. And here you can see that for my persona, somehow what I clicked around in, in the website, um, it, did categorize myself into the applicant um, intention audience. This already helps in uh, at least figuring out uh, what the intention is of all my contacts in our marketing automation and split that up into maybe four or more audiences. Great. How can we use this um, it's similar to the example that we showed with Sophia into sending personalized email campaigns? This is where it gets interesting. Uh, so here we have the Drop Solid newsletter, and we have multilingual, multi-intention audience um, yeah, visitors. And we can see, okay, do you have a language in English? Then depending, is it business, send the business email, is it technical, send a technical email, is it applicant, send applicant email, or send the default one. The same thing happens for Dutch, uh, where we uh, have different emails depending on the intention of the audience, which it could be business or technical or applicant. Um, so similar from how you saw before, how we detect the intention. Now, how does this then translate into to details? You can see this was sent out somewhere in the end of October. Um, this was our first test. Um, see, okay, for the default, there's quite a lot of desktop and smartphone, a bit more desktop, but still 50-50. If you go into tech, you can see there's a lot more desktop users than a smartphone. Maybe not quantitative enough, but at least there's a difference. Um, and you can also see with business, it actually gets back to the, the normal vibe again uh, between 50-50 and same with applicants. Um, so that's more or less how we use this intention audiences in Mautic. Uh, we're sending that using the JavaScript API of Mautic into Mautic, into custom fields that uh, then can be used for segmentations um, into newsletters, but could also be used for everything else, uh, including the pop-up items that Mautic provides or landing pages, um, maybe access to uh, assets. Um, so suddenly you can start to, to use this to your advantage. 
um, and get actually closer to that end user. Now, um, let's get back to the presentation. Hopefully that uh, helped you understand uh, what this is about and how Apache Unomi can actually augment your combination of your CMS and uh, Mautic. Um, in the drop salt case, the Drupal CMS and Mautic marketing automation. Uh, but this is valid for uh, many other CMSs, uh, maybe also WordPress or um, other systems. The only downside is um, that you have to make that little interaction between Unomi and your CMS if it's not Drupal to make it change contents on the fly. So Apache Unomi is very powerful because you send it events and it sends you back the full profile. Um, it has consent management features um, built in that you could use on your website to record when the people accept specific cookies, for example. Um, so that helps you with that. And it's fully open source from the Apache Foundation. Uh, so it's not going away very quickly, similar as uh, Mautic as well. In the, the journey that I showed you, we suddenly went from social media blog website into a personalized website, into an email personalization campaign, uh, increasing the likeliness that someone actually will convert. Um, so that's already great. But on top of that, not just for conversion optimization, your end user might feel closer to your brand. Um, and in these days, people really hop from brand to brand if they have a bad personal experience. Yeah. So what's happening in the field, it's actually going from CMS to OpenDXP. Um, you used to have CMSs separately and then marketing automation separately um, from MailChimp to HubSpot. Um, you could use Mautic separately, but it gets a lot more powerful if you start to integrate that into different systems. Um, and that's also what Gartner says. Gartner is the analyst firm that tries to identify trends. Sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong. I will leave that in the middle. Um, but you can see that in the experience part, personalization and context awareness is very critical and actually goes beyond the CMS level, also in the marketing automation level. So the smarter your marketing automation is and understands your profile or your uh, customer, the, the better it will become for you to do business with uh, those people and the more trust you will actually gain if you're transparent in what you're processing, how you're processing, and maybe also showing all that data. Eh? What, what do you know about me? Um, so in, in summary, eh, so we have the CMS, the CDP, customer data platform, which is, you know me, and marketing automation. Um, and I listed a couple of uh, solutions here, um, how you can build this all yourself using open source tools. Eh? So first, the obvious one in this conference, the Mautic marketing automation, uh, a great solution very extendable with APIs uh, and the JavaScript API to send custom data to custom fields. Then you have Apache Unomi, amazing rule builder, also open source um, and based on uh, yeah, solid foundations. Then there's Drupal. Drupal is a great CMS that can provide yeah, headless experiences or uh, just like really great experiences with content or migrating content into the CMS or out commerce, anything you'd like. Um, you might have heard of, of Drupal. And then there's also the, the linker module that couples, you know me, personalization uh, with Drupal. Then there's also the Mautic form embedding um, module for Drupal, which allows you to do a, like an autocomplete list of all the forms that you have created in uh, Mautic and then embed that natively in Drupal with that same styling. Maybe you've used this in Mautic before, um, and this is where you actually say, okay, give me the HTML of this form and you copy paste that into your site. Well, that no longer needs to happen. You'll just get the dropdown of all the forms. Uh, you can authenticate with Mautic in your Drupal site and you're ready to uh, rock and roll. And there's also the Drop Solid Rocket Ship Drupal distribution that helps you get started um, as a quick start into the Drupal CMS. Next to that, there's also the cookie compliance GDPR module for Drupal that helps you set this up using maybe Google Tag Manager um, or with configuration within Drupal itself to make sure that you are not capturing any data within the European Union uh, and maybe in the future uh, outside of those regions uh, if you don't have any consent. Uh, you also need to start to track the consent um, 
capture or like when someone accepted the consent. And you could also actually send that into Matic for this is the date that this person actually accepted consent or you use software like you know me um, to, to capture all that data and keep isolating marketing automation for what it's like intended to do so. Um, and then next to that, optional but very useful for those intentional audiences is the DropSolid platform for AI segmentation. Um, it, it just really helps to say, okay, just see, tell me what kind of patterns you see on my website instead of trying to think of how can I start to create segments uh, within my website based on certain static interactions. So to conclude, um, um, this is a bit of a track record of, of DropSolid. This is the product that DropSolid built but built on foundations from open source communities. And uh, we also try to contribute back uh, and not just try to, we do uh, into the Drupal ecosystem, but also more recently into the Mautic e like ecosystem. Um, so also if you're interested to know more about that, happy to help. If you think this could be interesting for you or your customers, um, also happy to chat in our booth or um, anywhere else. So if there's any questions, uh, happy to hear them. Uh, otherwise, you can find me at Slack in the Mautic Slack in the DropSolid booth, also on this conference, or on Twitter, which is the at Nick underscore VH for more Q and A. I think now we're waiting for Roland, right? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here. Um, good presentation, uh, Nick. Um, I uh, haven't got any questions yet uh, from the attendees, but I know uh, we have a quite a few people here uh, in, the, in the track. So I guess we will be uh, expecting their questions uh, in any moment. Um, So it's always a bit different uh, if it's remote. Eh? Yes, yes. Cannot yes. see an audience with the hands. Uh. <laughs> that is that is very true. That is very true. That is very true. Um, so where did where did the ideas come from to kind of like um, uh, build all that together to to come up as an answer to the to the issue that you just presented? So. Um, as as Drop Solid, we have the the aim to build digital solutions for the mid market. Um, this sounds vague, but basically, if you take a look at the the top market, um, which is served by companies like Adobe or um, Sitecore um, or these these massive enterprise companies, they have built something similar like this, fully proprietary at a license cost that. Um, is maybe more expensive than your house. Um, so this doesn't make a lot of sense for mid-market or companies in, in Europe or maybe outside of the US, basically. And it, the market is, is very different and you don't have the scale to um, yeah, make it a viable business case sometimes to invest in such technologies. And even so, the data that you're collecting in those technologies is proprietary. Uh, so one thing is uh, maybe a bit ideology, uh, open source and open data. That's something I really believe in. The other part is actually also uh, enablement of that market at a, at a price point where it makes sense to invest in to then get a return on investments or as we call it, return on experience. Um, so in, we started to look at these solutions and within our company, we have a lot of experience with Drupal uh, to build great websites. Yeah. Um, and then saw people started to experiment with HubSpot or with MailChimp. And then suddenly you had profiles in MailChimp and you had profiles in HubSpot and then you had profiles in Salesforce or whatever other technologies you had there. Um, and then somehow you had to make API connections and then people started to mess with Zapier and all these other crazy things that suddenly happened. And then the, yeah, the companies that tried to play with these technologies kind of like fell over uh, because suddenly it was too complex and it was not yes. a simple solution to yes, this, this marketing challenge. Yeah. Um, so we, we thought, okay, how can we solve this? Um, we wrote a grant application to the, the Belgian government and said, okay, we want to look into this. 
um, and started to um, yeah, invest in an R&D department to try to build something like this based on open source components. Like we, we cannot build a CDP or customer data pro like platform ourselves. We cannot build a marketing automation platform ourselves, um, but we can couple all these things together in an easy way. And that's uh, more or less like what we did to then say, okay, if you don't have the money to do this, fine, this is a solution. Maybe you can yeah. do this yourself or um, you can pay us and we'll implement this for you, but it's yours. Uh, uh, even if you walk <laughs> away, it's fine. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so we get uh, one question here from uh, Lisa. Uh, she want to know uh, how do you measure the the effectiveness of uh, the personalization with uh, Unami? Well, so that's here. Huh? So um, these segments actually are segments in Unomi, as you saw in the demo, huh? where we say, okay, um, we have these intention audiences or more simple um if you want to make personalization towards people on desktop versus people on touchscreen devices you could do so eh? that's something that is tracked we with that same api integration we actually send that into google analytics um, and we can see based on these segments in a matrix with everything else that we configure in google analytics what is the goal conversion rate for specific segments um and i can maybe show you this in practice uh here if you give me a second, I'll try to show you. Okay. So let's see in the last 30 days. So this is from the drop solid site that you'll see. Um, and you can see we have a couple of sessions um, from applicants and I'll, I'll zoom a bit. Um, or business decision makers, technical decision makers, and a community. Um, so apparently we have a lot of people that want to apply for a job at DropSolid in this case. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you can also see that the conversion rate of people applying for a job is a lot higher. And that makes sense uh, because um, if they apply for a job, they probably fill in a form. They're much more eager than um, maybe a potential customer that wants to do business. Um, so that's fine. Um, but here we can see something interesting. If we identify someone as technical, um, even though the sessions are lower, there's a higher likeliness that some, that person will actually convert. Um, so what we should do, or at least that's the strategy that we uh, should be taking right now, is change the wordings and maybe change the content on our site if we detect that someone is a business decision maker in order to be less technical and talk more business uh, in order to maybe increase that likeliness for conversion. Uh, and that's how we test and, and tweak these things. We can then start with A-B that, A-B testing. Um, that's something um, that you could set up as well. Um, but that's more or less a concept on how you measure uh, personalization on your website. OK, and the effectiveness. OK, interesting. And effectiveness, yeah. Yeah, OK. So Ono has a, a question as well. Um, he said that he's still uh, uh, overwhelming a little bit, uh, all the information you just shared. but. Uh, um, he said, if he does understand correctly, uh, does uh, uh, Unomi determines how to segment the visitors? How uh, is the question? How Unomi does that, or if Unomi does that? If if uh, uh, Unomi determines how to segment the visitors. Yeah. So maybe to give you a bit of overview on on that, this is a UI that we've built on top of Unomi. Um, the, the most basic case on how to create a segment um, is yeah, desktop users. Um, and then you can actually get like all the properties that are in Unomi because you're sending them into that customer data profile. And then uh, here, for example, um, let me just see. Yeah, I think there's something like, yeah, touch support and classification device touch support can say uh, equals uh, true or false. And this is how you create a segment you say, OK, mm -hmm. fine. Now um, I have a segment that talks about okay, people with a touch screen support. The, the whole intention classification part is um, artificial intelligence or machine learning using a neural network that we created on top of all that data to classify people into different groups 
and then add that into uh, Unomi as to identify that. Um, that part is on a license based for now. Um, if you want to know more about that, happy to explain. Um, but that's like a somewhat of a USB of our platform, but everything else is fully open. Okay. Okay. Hopefully that answers the question. If not, happy to talk more on yes, Slack. I think it does answer the question, but yes, like you said, uh, if it's still unclear, he definitely can reach out and, uh, and chat more about it. Uh, yes, I cannot see any other questions so far. Let me check something real quick on this side. Yeah, yeah I did notice that the link in, in the video is not really showing the questions that you're asking me, so I don't see the questions. The link in your video? That might be my problem. No, yeah. it's not going to be your problem. I think it's uh, an issue. Oh, no, it's my mistake. I'm sorry. I, I should have clicked on ask a question and you can see the questions. <laughs> oh, OK. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, there's uh, a little bit of learning curve as well toward uh, this platform today. So, <laughs> but. Uh, Yes, we don't have any more questions so far. Mm -hmm. So, oh, we'll give people some time to go to the toilet then. No problem. <laughs> true, true, true. Uh, okay, so. Yeah, oh, there's a uh, question oh, from me. Yes, there is a question from John, I think, if I pronounce it correctly. So he said, uh, how does the communication work between uh, Drupal, you know me, and uh, Maurik? Yeah, so the, the communication uh, all works through JavaScript. Um, and I can maybe explain you that here. Um, so this, for example, is a function uh, in JavaScript that we add to Google Tag Manager or to your website itself. We say after the response of uh, you know me, I want to execute a function send to Matic Handler. Now the function of send to Matic Handler is this function. And uh, what it does is that it tries to find, okay, from my profile that came back from you know me, uh, which is, is this, um, give me all my segments give me the segment names, which could be the business decision maker or the technical, um, and then send that into a page view event from Matic using these two custom fields. And um, how does that look like then in Matic itself? You can see here in the audit log um, that today um, we updated my profile uh, with a specific personalization segment UUID, like a unique identifier, but also with the name. Another interesting part is that we also do the reverse. We are sending uh, Matic the profile of my Unomi uh, profile or the identifier of my Unomi profile so that if I go into my uh, dashboard of Unomi, I can find all the interactions of this specific person, including where this person clicked on. Um, so this tree uh, something something is exactly the same as what you see here. And uh, if you just take a look at the last seven days, yeah, apparently I need to refresh. I give it a second. Mm -hmm. um, you can actually find all these profiles back, um, I think. I don't know what the tree e something was. Uh, yeah, apparently it was a different one, but you can find all the interactions that happened with that specific profile uh, here in the dashboard. 
Yeah. Um, and then you can try to find, okay, where does the person click on, or you can actually create, because this is all APIs, similar uh, to Hotjar, like a heat map of the website for that specific person, um, or do any post-processing with that data. The important parts to understand here um, is not, this is like super really like extensive in terms of functionality. No, this is your data. Uh, it, this is first party data. Nobody else has access um, to that data. You're not processing this with any other tracker system, um, but it also doesn't work cross, um, cross domain. And maybe one interesting part uh, there is the, the privacy part. Uh, if you take a look at uh, the website of Dropsolid in Incognito, um, you can okay see uh, everything. I'll accept everything. Fine, but it doesn't mean that it actually did accept everything. Um, this is something that is happening in, in browsers uh, soon, um, that they're going to block third-party cookies. Because you know me is actually it could be hosted on your domain or on, on your services, could be you know me dots, whatever your business is. Same with Motic. Motic you host on your domain uh, as a subdomain, perhaps. Um, you can see that Google and also Firefox and Safari um, block everything that is not a subdomain from your own domain. Uh, so third party trackers will be blocked soon. Um, and you know me is uh, something that can help you not just avoid this, but secure your own data, not making sure you're sharing a third party data and making sure that your marketing machine doesn't suddenly stop working. Okay. Um, but I don't have to convince you of Matic, obviously, in some other conferences I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, well. Um, well, I guess uh, we we are going to wrap it up here. Well, uh, Nick, thank you very much for uh, sharing all this with us. And uh, I hope we'll uh, see you around uh, in not only in Slack, as, as you mentioned there on Twitter and uh, um, around uh, at the booth or uh, network uh, all day today. I'll, I'll try to be all day, but um, <laughs> I have to pick up my kids at six, which is in an hour and a half. So, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, no, but for sure I'll be around at 10 PM. I also have, I'm a panelist in a session about high availability Matic. Oh, okay. So okay. you'll be able to see me there. Yeah. We'll see you around. All right. Well, thank you very much. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.